uh, a, uh, there was a monk that joined a monastery. And in this monastery, they had to take a vow of silence for three years. But then after three years, they could speak two words. After the end of the first three years, this monk came to the uh, father superior and said, bed hard. Then went away. Three years later, he comes back and he's got two more words. He said, bad food. Three years later, he comes back. Two more words. He says, no TV. Three years later, he comes back with his robe and his sandals. He hands them to the Father Superior and he says, I quit. And the Father Superior said, well, it's not surprising. You haven't done anything but complain since you've been here. Now listen, some of you may have reason to complain about some of the things that are going on in your life right now, but I've got a word for you this morning. So I don't know what has been happening and what's been going on specifically in your life, but the good news is God has a word for us today. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 says this, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all linked together in one place. They were all linked together. Everybody say, all linked together. They were all linked together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now in this passage of scriptures, we see 120 hungry hearts who are filled with the Holy Spirit. 120 frustrated disciples of Christ that are filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by a supernatural, powerful on high, and that Holy Spirit comes upon them, comes in them, gives them this anointing that sends them directly into the line of fire. Immediately, they start facing persecution and attack like they have never faced before. This infant church, this brand new, spirit-filled, empowered church is now thrust right into the heat of the battle. So much that when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, we see the, uh, the, the battle intensify. And then in Acts chapter 4, we see another outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But here, I want to pause just for a moment and say this. There are some of you that feel like this New Testament church. You feel like this 120. You feel like you've been beaten. You feel like you've been exhausted. You feel like you've been knocked left and right. You feel like nothing is going right. You feel like you have had the wind knocked out of you. And I'm declaring to you there's a new chapter coming. I'm declaring to you there's a new day coming. There's a new opportunity coming. There's a new second wind of the Holy Spirit that's coming your way. In fact, when we look at Acts chapter 4, the next outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 4 verse 29 Look what happens. Here's the 120. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit in that upper room. Then they start facing persecution and attack like they've never faced before. Now here in Acts chapter 4, look at how they respond to it. It says, Now, Lord, consider their threats, the threats of the people that were threatening them because of their embrace of the Holy Spirit, their embrace of the message of the resurrection, their embrace of the gospel, their embrace of advancing the New Testament church. They're, they're being threatened. Their lives are being threatened. Nobody here gets threatened for being a follower of Christ. We don't understand this, but we have other types of attacks. We have other battles that we, we are engaged in, other spiritual battles. But look what he says. Consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Notice they didn't ask for an escape route. Lord, help us get out of here without any trouble. Help us get out of here without losing a limb. Help us get out of here without somebody saying something bad to me and hurting my feelings or offending me in some way. No, that's not what they said. Look what they said. Consider our threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Give us boldness to be able to stand up against these attacks. You see, sometimes we fall into a a method of retreat when we should be asking God for boldness to stand up against the attacks. Thank you for one amen. The rest of you just being sissies here this morning. He said, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Now notice, it says that after they had prayed, the place where their meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, they'd already been filled once 
in the upper room in Acts chapter 2. Now here they are after going through all these attacks and persecution. They're saying, God, give us boldness to be able to speak your word with boldness and clarity in the face of all this persecution. So God fills them up again. Notice what happened. They got a second win. Acts 2 was the first win. Acts 4 is the second win. Now there's a phrase that we're all familiar with, the second win. It's when a runner is out there running and all of a sudden he reaches this point of exhaustion. And right at the point of when the runner feels like they're about to collapse and they're about to uh, not have the energy to go one step more, then all of a sudden there's this almost as if it's a supernatural revitalization. I mean, all of a sudden something just fills them and, and, and gives them this ability to push on through. And oftentimes this phenomenon called the second wind pushes them into the winter circle. Now, some scientists believe that this phenomenon called the second wind is the body finding the proper balance of oxygen to counteract the buildup of lactic acid in the muscles. Others claim that it's an endorphin production. Others claim that it's purely psychological. Regardless of the cause, there is absolutely, absolutely no disputing the fact that it happens. It happens. So the second wind, it's a metaphor for new strength at the point of exhaustion. And some of you are at the point of exhaustion. Some of you that are watching right now online, you're at the point of exhaustion, spiritual exhaustion, emotional exhaustion. You're at the point of giving up, throwing in the towel. And I'm telling you, you're getting ready to get a second wind. A second wind is coming. Now, this is what I know. That the Lord said that many of his people have reached this point of exhaustion and it's because the spirit of the constrictor has wrapped its coils around you and is trying to squeeze the very breath out of you. And that's what the, the spirit of the constrictor does. That's what the spirit of, of the enemy does. In fact, all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the, Satan is always referred to as a serpent. He's referred to as a snake. He's, a, he's, he's just slimy and slithery like that. But the Bible says that Jesus has been given power and authority, and that same power and authority has been given to us to trample over all serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. Now, the boa constrictor can grow up to 30 feet long and over 300 pounds, but the boa does not kill its victim with venom. It kills its victim by coiling around it and squeezing the very life out of it squeezing the breath right out of it. And as its victim exhales, then it squeezes just a little bit tighter. With every breath that the victim releases, the constrictor just constricts a little tighter until it takes the breath right out of them. And there's a lot of people in this church that is, you're, 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 you're wrapped up by the constrictor and he's, he's squeezing the life right out of you. But I'm here to tell you, if you will get the second win, if you will receive the second win, you're going to break that stronghold of the enemy. You're going to break that stronghold of the constrictor. You're going to get your breath back, and everything's going to change. Now look what the Bible says in Daniel 7, 25. It says, He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Wear out. That word wear out means to afflict, to harass, to exhaust, to push, to fainting. I think I've got to go to the next slide, please. There. To afflict, to harass, to exhaust, to push, to fainting or weariness, to put under continuous pressure or strain. That's what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to just wear you out and get you at a point where you're willing to give up. And I know some of you have been under continuous, nonstop pressure, nonstop, unrelenting, no relief attack, one thing after another. You're under that pressure physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Every time you get victory in one area, then it's like the enemy hits you on another part of your life. And he's trying to drive you to the point of exhaustion. He's trying to squeeze the very life right out of you. And I want you to know that, that even though that breath is symbolic of the breath of God is symbolic of life. If you expose the spirit of the constrictor, we can take authority over the spirit of the constrictor and you can break that stronghold over your life and everything changes today. Amen. Think about this. Amen. Think about this. The valley of dry bones was no threat to the devil until the wind of the spirit breathed upon it and raised up just a bunch of, of bones into a, a mighty army. 
The, 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 the 120 discouraged believers that were in that upper room, they were no threat to the devil until the wind of the Spirit breathed upon them. And they were empowered with that Spirit, and they went out and they turned the world upside down. 300 foxes were no problem to the Philistines until Samson tied their tails together, set them on fire, and all of a sudden they became weapons of mass destruction as they began to tear up the cornfields of the Philistines and the olive trees and, and, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the vineyards of the Philistines. They became weapons of mass destruction when they connect together, when they link together and were set on fire. You see, that's what the devil's afraid of. He's afraid of a church that comes together, a church that links together and is on fire. Can I tell you, the devil's not afraid of me. He's not afraid of uh, my preaching. He's not afraid of your singing. He's not afraid of our programs. He's not afraid of our buildings. He's not afraid of our golf carts. He's not afraid of our coffee shop. He's not afraid uh, of any of those things. You know what he's afraid of? He's afraid of People who get on fire, who come together, link together, and realize we're better together, and we let the wind of the Spirit begin to empower us. A preacher that's on fire is what the devil's afraid of. A church that's on fire is what the devil's afraid of. A sound man that's on fire is what the devil's afraid of. Leaders that are on fire, small group leaders and elders and deacons and directors that are on fire, that's what the devil's afraid of. When we come together and we link together and we're empowered and set on fire by the, by the Spirit of God, that's what changes changes things. When the wind blows, everything changes things. I mean, you think about it. When in the, back in the book of Genesis, when the wind began to blow over the face of the earth, it was dark. It was formless. It was void. It, 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 it had no image. But then all of a sudden, the breath of God's Spirit breathes upon it. And there's life, and there's plants, and there's trees, and there's animals, and there's birds. And suddenly, where there was nothing, there is something beautiful. It was good. God said it was good. When the wind blew in and divided the Red Sea, the children of Israel were able to walk across on dry ground. And then the wind blew again, and it closed the Red Sea and it destroyed all of Pharaoh's army. When the wind blew across the earth, it dried up the earth after the the 40 days and 40 nights of a flood. When the wind blew in, it blew the locusts in, the plague of the locusts, and then it blew the plague of the locusts out. When the wind blew in, it blew quail to the complaining Israelites and fed them and provided for them. When the wind blew, it ended a three and a half year drought. When the wind blew upon that valley of dry bones, it became a mighty army. And when the wind blew upon the hundred in the upper room. Think about it. It changed them. It took a bunch of broken hearted, discouraged disciples and turned them into the greatest force of God on this earth that the earth has ever seen. That's the New Testament church. That's us. That's you and me. Yeah, we're going to get hit left and right. Yeah, we're going to face opposition. We're going to have obstacles. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have difficulties, but there's a second win. There's a wind that comes and breathes upon us and empowers us to be able to stand up against the forces that are coming against us. It gives us the ability to look fear in the face and to be able to take authority over it, to look that spirit of constrictor and to be able to take authority over it. Acts 4 tells us that many of the same disciples that were in that upper room were now in another room. And as they gathered and as they prayed, they didn't sit around and lick each other's wounds, and oh, woe is me. Now they prayed for boldness. They prayed for an empowerment to speak the word of God boldly. Look at it again in Acts 4, 29. It'll be there on the screen. Consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness, to stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. They got a second wind, a refilling, a fresh anointing, a fresh baptism, a fresh fire. And then in the next chapter, in Acts chapter 5, as the musicians come back, please, in Acts chapter 5, look at verse number 12. It says, the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. Here's what I want you to realize. Whenever the second wind comes, that's when the miracles start coming. Whenever we stop focusing on the constrictor and we take authority over the constrictor and we say, I want the Spirit of God to breathe upon me, then all of a sudden we start taking authority over the constrictor. We trample upon him and signs and wonders start flowing. Signs and wonders start working in your life and in mine. I know you may be tired. You may be worn out. You may be at the point of exhaustion. You may have the breath knocked out of you, but I'm telling you, we've exposed the spirit of the constrictor today. The, The constrictor, he counts on you struggling. 
He counts on you kicking and screaming. He counts on you getting frustrated and fatigued because every time you exhale, he just coils a little bit tighter. He just squeezes a little bit tighter, but God is sending a second wind, a second wind upon you, a second wind upon Freedom Church, a second wind to us. And I believe that it won't be like the spiritual asthma of the past where you've had to fight for every single breath. No, no, no. I believe it's going to give you power. It's going to give you boldness. It's going to give you authority to be able to stand up against your adversaries and to be able to stand with confidence and take authority over them and walk through the fire without getting burned. Somebody say amen. He's sending a second wind. And I believe it's available to every single one of us today. We're putting the serpent under our feet. We're giving him notice. No more. You have no, no longer do you have a hold on me. I open myself up to the breath of the spirit to breathe upon me. Here's what I want you to do. Just stand to your feet all over this place. And I want you to do something with me. Either you put your hands out this way or you can put your hands up this way. But I want you to get your hands in a in a position of receiving. I want you to close your eyes just for a minute. And I want you to take just a moment. I want you to breathe in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Just begin to breathe. Just begin to breathe. Listen, I'm not giving you meditation exercises right now. I want you to just focus on breathing. Because here's what I want the Spirit of God to reveal to you, just as easy as it is for you to breathe in naturally and to breathe out naturally. God wants you to breathe in the wind of His Spirit and breathe out the boldness of His Word. Breathe in the power of His Spirit. Breathe out the boldness of his word. Breathe in the power of the spirit. Breathe out boldness of his word. Just breathe it in right now. Listen, it's not a sin to lose your breath. It's not a sin to run out of gas. We've all been there before. But it's a sin believing that you can keep on going without stopping and being refilled and and getting the second wind and needing the breath of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's where we begin to err. That's where we begin to sin. That's where we begin to go wrong. When we think we can do it ourselves, you can't do it yourself. That's why you're at the point of exhaustion because you've tried to do it yourself. Just breathe in the breath of the Holy Spirit. I don't care who you are, how spirit you are, how anointed you are right now. You will at some point run out of gas and you're going you're gonna to hit a wall and you're going to need the second wind. And I'm telling you, the second wind is coming right now. Whether you're listening to this online or whether you're here in this room right now, there's a second wind that's coming. It's coming to you. It's coming to all who will receive it. It's coming to all all who will open up their hearts and say, breathe upon me. Just tell him, say, Lord, I'm ready for a second wind. I'm ready for the breath of your Holy Spirit to breathe upon me. I'm ready to receive what you have for me in this place today. I'm, I'm refusing to be constricted by the enemy anymore, but I'm ready to receive from the Spirit of God. Just breathe in His Spirit and breathe out His praise now. Breathe in His Spirit and release praise. Come on, lift your voices up to Him right now and just begin to declare praise. Begin to release praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just bless Him right now. Adore him. Honor him. While you're praising him, he's filling you. He's anointing you. He's empowering you. Fear has to go. Doubt has to go. Confusion has to go. Come on, lift up your voice.
I want everyone that would say, Kendall, you've been talking about me today. I've been at that point of exhaustion, that point of just can't take it anymore. Slip up your hand. Hold it up high. Just hold it up high. Hold it up high. Come on. Hold it up high. Now I want everyone who sees one of those hands nearby. I just want to get around you. We're just going to lay hands. We're going to breathe life. Link together on fire. We're unstoppable. But the enemy loves to isolate us and get us by ourselves and think that we're all alone and nobody else is going through this except us. So if you have your hand lifted up, everybody look around and just get to that person, put your hand on their shoulder, and we're going to again begin to breathe life. We're just going to speak life. Come on, speak hope, speak joy, speak freedom, speak liberty. Come on, speak it over them right now in the name of Jesus. Receive his strength. Receive his power. Receive his anointing. Receive a second wind. A second wind. A second wind. A second wind. In Jesus' name. A second wind. Breathe across this room. Breathe to those online. A second wind. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just bow your heads with me all over this place. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or maybe... You have, but you find yourself having wandered away from your faith in Christ. Like this is your day to come back to him. Even if you've been right there saying, Lord, I need a second wind. But you realize there's some things in your heart that just aren't right. You say, I need to get them right. I need to make it right. I need Jesus to be Lord of my life. I realize I've given place to the constrictor. He's been constricting me, holding me back, hindering me, holding me captive. But no longer, I'm ready to surrender to Jesus because he's the one who can set me free. If that's you, I want you to slip up your hand right now. Just slip it up. Just hold it up. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right there where you are. I want to pray for you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. All right, if you're online right now, you're watching online, you say, you know what? You're talking to me. And I want you to pray this prayer along with those who are here in this room. Nobody's going to pray alone. I want you to pray this prayer and we believe. Just as the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is our Lord and we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, then we can be saved. Everybody say this. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die upon the cross for me. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today and every day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, to those of you that raised your hand, here's what I want you to do. Before the service is over, or as soon as I dismiss, I want you to make your way over to the I Have Decided wall, sign it, date it, declare today is the day I decided to follow Jesus. If you want a book that it's entitled Now What? It'll help you with your next step in following Christ. You can pick it up right over there. Somebody will be right there to give that to you. If you need a Bible, we have Bibles there. We'd love to give to you as well. Listen, the wind of the Spirit wants to breathe upon you and breathe in you and through you each and every day. And if you will allow him to, then I promise you, your life will be forever changed.
Y'all stretch your hands out here towards Migdalia. Will you do that for me? Father, Lord, I pray for Migdalia today. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you love us enough to wrap your arms around our hurting hearts and to heal, to restore, to renew, to let us know that you care about us no matter what we're going through, no matter where we are, that you are faithful and you are able to bring us through our present trials. I declare in the name of Jesus that a second wind of the Spirit breathe upon Magdalia today. Lord, I thank you that she is part of this body, connected here, and that, Lord, you're using her in a very special way. Lord, all throughout this church, all throughout this church body, here and in all the other services, and those that watch us online, Lord, I pray that you allow us all to realize we're all together, we're all connected, we're all in this thing together, and together we will be stronger as we allow your Spirit to breathe upon us, to change us, and to renew us. Lord, let us all get the second wind, a second wind that changes us and allows us to confront that constrictor and take authority over him in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. Hey, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you great, great peace. I love you guys. Have a blessed, blessed week.